TMVR. Okay. Uh, here is it that uh, prevalence of uh, mitral regurgitation in the uh, US, if you see here about 4.1 million patients who have total mitral regurgitation, more than uh, 3 plus is about 1.7 million and every year newly diagnosed about 14 percent which is 250,000. Of that, if you see only 30,000 annually get a mitral valve surgery, only 2 percent is treated surgically. So it's a large growing clinical unmet need, you still have like 1.6 million patients who have not had any treatment. And we all know that untreated severe mitral regurgitation has associated increased morbidity as well as uh, mortality. And this is also we know the pre uh, prevalence of CHF and our patients with CHF moderate to severe MR is present in about 40 percent of the patients and about 5 million of patients are uh, with heart failure in the United States. So just to go over simple classification of mitral regurgitation, two types, primary and secondary. Primary where you see it is uh, the valve pathology, usually is a leaflet, subvalvular apparatus, cordae or papillary muscle, but we are more interested in the leaflet. Secondary is the myocardial uh, problem, which is uh, called the functional MR. And this is what you see. The first one primary, all valve problem, mostly prolapse. And the second one ischemic, not ischemic, but dilated uh, ventricle and then you get a secondary MR. So the prognostic determinant of the mitral regurgitation is the severity of mitral regurgitation, the left ventricular function, or the symptoms, as shown the, by this uh, New, England, New England Journal paper that asymptomatic primary MR patient, uh, the severity and survival depend on the degree of uh, MR, and this is the paper where we got the ERO, the, efficient, uh, uh, the effective regurgitant volume, of uh, 40 or so, if it's uh, more than that, that is when the survival is poor, same thing, EF is low, survival is poor, and uh, uh, same thing with the symptoms, once they are symptomatic, your survival is poor. Secondary mitral regurgitation, again shows the same, that uh, rehospitalization and severity all depends on how severe the mitral regurgitation. What are the current therapy that are available? As you see, everybody has to be on good medical therapy, most of them can get surgery, but here we have what is called as uh, uh, the mitral clip in between. So the average, average two randomized uh, clinical trial, if you see what it did was randomized patient to mitral valve surgery replacement or catheter based mitral valve repair using the mitral clip system. And that was two to one randomization of uh, close to 279 patient with three to plus uh, uh, significant mitral regurgitation and who had echocardiography as well as clinical follow-up up to five years. And this is the mitral NT system and what is the new NT system you see if you have the grippers, the grippers are, have a better uh, angle of uh, 120 degrees so you are able to grasp as well as able to clip majority of the leaflets. The anatomical eligibility for the criteria or for the degenerative mitral uh, flail leaflet, you need a gap of less than 10 millimeter and width of less than 15 millimeter when it is a degeneration. So what did Average 2 trial show? That the clip was very safe. If you take in the first 30 days compared to the control group, you see here 9.6 percent majority of these patients were who re uh, re required surgery. The transfusion was taken into account. That is why it makes look like it's a very safe procedure. But compared to surgery, cl clinical success at 12 months was still better, but not as effective. This led to the CLIP approval. Uh, the New England Journal paper saying that although percutaneous repair was less effective at reducing mitral regurgitation than conventional surgery, the procedure was associated with superior safety and similar improvement in clinical uh, outcomes. And this is what I want to show. If you go with echocardiography, at 12 months, at least 18 percent of the patient had a residual 3 plus MR. But if you take the same patient who are on medical therapy, the functional class of NYSA class uh, 2 to 1 was, if you see here, was very, very low, even at 1 as well as at 5 years, essentially trying to say that even if we left people with 2 to three, uh, 2 plus MR, that their functional class was way better. And uh, this is the 5 year outcome. And if you see this slide, which is very important, that if the, the patients who have not uh, who had percutaneous uh, treatment had uh, MV surgery or reoperation in the first six months. So if you take after six months, 
both the group had a similar outcome up to five years. Uh, this is the prohibitive surgical risk where you show the same thing that if you if they did clip this other patient who are very high risk about 127 patient with a very high uh, STS score the implant success was about 95 percent or so same the survival was very uh, good in them and mitral regurgitation was better hospitalization for heart failure was definitely better uh, NYHA functional class was better as well as their uh, left ventricular function uh, EF volume so acute procedural success if you see that the initial learning curve the, from 2004 uh, where the clip success was about just about 60 percent now we are close to 100 percent reaching to 2015-16 and right now about 45,000 procedures have been done worldwide using the mitral clip system so this is the recent presentation during the ACC where one year clinical outcome was looked at the commercial transcatheter mitral valve repair in the United States using the TVT registry so what they did was patients um, uh, characteristics procedure in hospital event from TVT registry of about uh, uh, close to 3000 patient and acute procedural success defined as the MR of less than 2 plus without cardiac surgery or death and then the events were linked to CMS uh, data so about uh, uh, 1800 patients or so, or so were available if you see here mean age 82 and mo most of them had uh, MR grade of 3 to 4 and majority of them were degenerative mitral regurgitation and if you take the frailty score this is one thing that is not included in the STS score but these were very frail patient with a, a C, a STS if there was about 6.1 uh, acute procedural success almost 92 percent and this is what is important that less than 2 MR was close to 93 percent of the patient and this is uh, what they call as uh, single leaflet uh, detachment um, uh, was about 1.5 percent as essentially saying once you are successfully deploy, uh, uh, deploy the clip detachment would be very less and length of stay almost just about two days or so again very important saying that if you have MR of grade 0 to 1 your survival is uh, very good compared to leaving the MR and in the multivariate model what uh, predicted one year mortality was residual MR means better survival as well as your better EF. Then we have the co-op trial which is ongoing should be finished with the, by the end of this month or so where you have patients uh, who are in heart failure and functional MR where they will be randomized one to one to mitral clip or control which is standard of care and essentially their primary outcome is uh, hospitalization for heart failure within two years. Uh, the similar one that is happening outside United States is called as a uh, reshape. Just going back quickly over the mitral valve uh, replacement, what are the, just to give you a landscape of the various devices they are out there, so, uh, two of them are in the trial which is uh, the Abbott Tandine and the Medtronic 12 the couple of uh, first in man cases going on and still a lot of them in the development uh, if these are the, the various valve if you see the early clinical experience the best experience so far has been with the Abbott uh, Tendine and the Medtronic uh, 12 valve right now they are being placed uh, trans apically so this was the first multicenter uh, global registry which showed that it is uh, possible to do uh, this mitral uh, valve replacement in severe mitral annular calcification uh, cases. The mitral trial is ongoing and Mount Sinai is actually part of it where a safety and feasibility of Edward Sapien device uh, is being evaluated in patients who have mitral annular calcification. This is the first PTMR case that was done here in Mount Sinai. If you see a 81 year old female with multiple comorbidities who had a bioprosthetic uh, MVR uh, who developed sim uh, severe uh, MR. Uh, her uh, STS score was uh, 9.4. This is her uh, echocardiogram where you see the um, MR which is severe on the right side. This is the 3D echo which shows both there is mitral regurgitation as well as uh, restriction of uh, mobility of this prosthetic valve. So you go transeptal 
uh, with the uh, uh, sapien, place it in position, dilate it with the pace may, uh, uh, pacing rate and this is the post where you see no mitral regurgitation. This is how the leaflet of the new sapien valve which was placed in the old prosthetic uh, valve no mitral regurgitation and this is a 3D picture where you see the leaflet that is nicely opening. Just uh, in conclusion, the mitral clip results in clinically significant mitral regurgitation reduction in majority of the patient is safer than surgery with a shorter time uh, recovery but less effective than surgery in uh, reducing MR. Mitral clip results in similar patient uh, centered outcome to surgery including improvement in heart failure and the quality of life reduction in readmission. The clip is ideally suited for poor surgical candidates with appropriate anatomy. So these are the key points that poor surgical candidates with appropriate anatomy and clip therapy is now FDA approved for severe MR of degenerative etiology who are poor or prohibitive surgical candidates for patients with the symptomatic uh, uh, functional MR. Mitral clip is available through the co-opt trial. Uh, TMR devices for native mitral valve device have potential but uh, you know they are long way to go off but there are several tri uh, you know devices in the pipeline. So TMVR using sapien valve uh, was re has recently been approved by FDA for using in bioprosthetic mitral valve, degenerated bioprosthetic mitral valve. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Kinney.